Hello, this is Haku Dabin, and today we are going to be reading some spooky stories because uh, today it's actually raining outside. So I thought it would be a nice time to have some spooky stories with a nice, gentle well, background noise of the rain hitting in my windows. If you like this video, please leave a like on the video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. Now let's get right into this. Hold on to your, your seats. Let's hope my wife I can keep up with me. <sighs> Is this a haunting or just something going on in my head? I honestly can't explain this. I remember this experience very clearly. When I was about 12 years old, I was looking for games on my phone as I was really bored with the games I had. Ouija board is always worse than your mom. Um, told me not to mess with, as I could be haunted or possessed, etc. You know, usual consequences of Ouija boards. Now, being that my mom didn't like that stuff, we didn't have an all board in the house, so I looked it up on the app store and I found a similar game with a lot of mixed reviews and a bunch of comments on the experience they had. I downloaded the game and I saw the rules. I played a couple times before school and nothing happened, but I never really said goodbye. I would say a few weeks later, something freaky happened when I was playing. I was asking the board a couple of normal questions, saying, How old are you? What's your name? etc. I was fooling around and didn't really believe it was real, so I was like, How old am I? Can you make my crush like me? I was being stupid. I don't remember what I said. I remember it, it, it saying I need help. I asked what I need and it said I need your body. And I said where are you? And it said behind you. I looked behind and me and there wasn't anything there. But I was really creeped out so I exited the app without saying goodbye and deleting it. And there wasn't anything there but I was... As soon as I deleted it I felt this weird vibration on my body. My legs and arms were tingling, my heart was racing. It went away after a couple of seconds, but I felt like, like that was the spirit really trying to get in my body. I haven't redownloaded the app since, but I feel like I'm being haunted now. When I'm in bed at night, I can see lights floating around, and when I turn on a light, there's nothing there. When I'm downstairs alone, the lights flicker. Am I being haunted or is this all in my head? Kind of like that noise. Reminds me of that game that I couldn't record. Dreams about the future. When I was about 9, maybe 10, did it really just stop raining? That sucks. Oh, I guess we could get it to you though. I'm now 15. I started having dreams that actually came true. The dreams I had weren't just vague hints about what might happen, they were identical to what would happen. Sometimes I would remember almost exactly what happened in my future dreams, so I tried changing the outcome a couple of times. None of my attempts were successful. I don't know why or how I started having these dreams. If anyone has a sim has had a similar experience or maybe knows more about these things, I'd love to hear about it. I've actually had this since I was a kid. Um, basically, sometimes I will dream about a sit a situation that I will be in. It's something really specific, and it will happen again in real life. And it's always really weird because when it happens, I'm like, oh, I remember that dream about this happening. And it gets down to specifics like what I said and what I was thinking at the time. It's really interesting.
Anyway. I imagine it's not that weird. But it is pretty interesting. Oh, that's fun. That means the Wi-Fi is broken. I think I'm being haunted. Help, please, me. <laughs> I'm becoming desperate. These past months, very weird things have been happening to me. First, the shadows. Since I moved out to my actual house not long ago, I keep seeing shadows moving out of the corner of my eyes. But usually disappear when I look directly at them. But they leave me feeling very uneasy. A few times I could even look at them directly and then disappear until I blinked or turned the lights on. They were terrifying. The noises, steps, knocking on the walls, a little kid crying in the middle of the other very silent, very silent night. I don't have any neighbors with kids and I live in a small building. A man laughing on my hallways. Baby's crying, whispers, so bruises. I keep getting random bruises I don't know the origin of. Lately, it's been worse. Literal paralyzing in fear. Nightmares where spirits or demons try to communicate with me, feeling completely helpless, sad, and drained. It's terrifying. Obsessions, dark thoughts, depression. The other night I woke up feeling observed. I always feel like someone is watching me even if I'm not seeing anything. And when I opened my eyes, I saw her. It or she was a woman, a shadow a figure with long hair and a sword face at the foot of my bed. She tried to grab my foot and I ran away from the bed and... Opened the light and she disappeared. Wow, I kind of lost my place there. I was fully awake and it was not sleep paralysis. I could move. Tonight I dreamed about them, whatever is hugging me again. I don't fully remember my dream, but the message was clear. They want something from me. They can't hurt my loved ones. I read on the internet that those things feed on pain and fear. I can give them plenty of that, but terrifies me that they it may hurt to my love to get it. I can't handle that. What the heck is going on? Do they want to possess me? Do they want to torture and feed on me? What can I do to protect my loved ones from them? Sounds awful. <sighs> I am a who did to my sister's room where I suspected she fooled with Ouija boards. Oh no, she was playing with the Luigi boards? Can't imagine she would do that. Anyway, I am a devoted Miss Anik Christian. I practice Jewish holidays. My faith is very devotional. I've already blessed my room with homemade and anointing oil on all doors, windows, and mirrors. My box has been moved by itself apparently and woke me up. I've been in touch just recently. Well, not directly. My clothing was touched. I am a temple of the Iraq or Holy Spirit. If you look at my prayer poetry on this, and like you can see, I'm anointed by a god. Not to brag, though. Despite you literally bragging and me finding this far less more reliable of a narrator, but we're gonna keep on reading anyway, because it's kind of it's kind of interesting. There's no reason for there to be a three knocks caused by the box being moved. So far, I paid praise for Allah's protection and sent down his angels and his holy spirit to burn out the unclean spirits. I have revoked whatever touched me, I sense a presence, and I know something's there. Hey, maybe I'm spooked and just overreacting. I feel something is there. I did rebook this entity, if it's Ulan Yeshua's name, to leave me alone. Huh. 
A spammer called me. That's annoying. Anyway. <sighs> I'm afraid of a spiritual attack if I go to bed, so I took measures to protect me. Prayer. Nothing else, really. Eh, too. I've nuked it. I've prayed for holy God. Those fire to burn up the demons. I pray for pain for the demons so that they, they leave. I pray to anoint the one that you use your words as a weapon of choice against the evil spirits. Meet them out of my house and my life. Answer them to the abyss. Do not listen to them. Just cast them out by your word alone. Let your angels come to every door in this household for protection. In Yeshua's name, I pray that all witchcraft and curses and hexes will bounce back a thousand and, and fold towards the one who sent it. I'm really trying not to laugh. Oh no, this OP seems a little bit iffy to me. Seems to be more or religious than actually about any sort of experience. Anyway. I kind of want to see people's replies. Whew. <sighs> When I, 22 female, when I was 12, I used to see an entity be made of static and wind in my peripherals. It always came during a certain activity I was doing without fail, and just stayed there and observed it, and eventually moved to more than one type of activity when it appeared. I have seen it again recently, despite moving from Florida to North Carolina. It followed me house is to house. It's gone taller too. I don't know what it is. It always keeps its distance, but it has been inching closer in recent days. I'm going to commission a sketch if said creature of such creature for identification if needed. Hmm. <sighs> All right. Hey, this one didn't fail to load the comments. That's nice. My little sister and I are convinced we met the devil. Okay, so I'm staying in a Canadian big city, traveling in with my little sister. It's summer and the weather is gorgeous. I'm going to say we were walking down the street. I imagine there is a street just called this street. There is a street called the At Street and the Is Street. I'm quite sure there is a, a street called The Street. When this encounter happened. But I'm not entirely sure about that, to tell you the truth. All this was two or three years ago now. There are details that I remember until the day I die. But the rest has already begun to fade. We stopped at a dispensary to buy some free rolls. Then the two of us parked ourselves on the sidewalk and went to smoke them. We were close to our hotel, and once we got there, we knew there'd be an elevator ride between us and our, our addiction. So we were planning to stand around a, a while and chain, smoke, and chain smoke for a bit. I've got my lighter in hand, and I haven't ignited it yet. But wait, before I continue, I've described this lighter to you because it might, it actually might matter, in some terrifying symbolic way.
I just fired in anticipation of these free rolls, maybe a half hour before meeting the man I had believed to be the devil. The lighter had a Keith Haring print on it, often called the Three-Eyed Monster. Here's an explanation I just cut and pasted from Google. The smiley face is another frequently used character found in many of Keith Haring's works. This icon, the three-eyed face, is a mysterious figure often associated with greed and excess. Alternatively, this character has been used to represent the unknown. Okay, back to the story. I've got my lighter in my hand, but I haven't ignited yet. The exact way I flick the aim, I see a suited man exiting the five guys we're standing in front of. My first thought the moment I saw him was, but he doesn't eat. When I recall that thought later on, safe in our hotel, it made my skin feel cold all over. <sighs> the suited man acknowledges no one as he storms out of the burger droid. He simply raises his hand high, as of telling to as of telling no taxi in particular, and demands lighter. His aloof behavior is kind of amusing to me. So I wave at the suited man and offering the service of my lighter. He walks towards us slowly, much too deliberately, and the two of us already begin to recoil a little at his aura. His suit is meticulous. I've never seen a, a fabric exactly like it. It's a dark blue o o color with thin silver threads. A 10 to 20k suit isn't a strange thing to see in the big city, but this one stands out somehow. I hate including the detail in my story, but it seems like the most, most because it seems like the most hackway writer would describe the devil's attire, but I have to because it feels important to be honest about it. Oh, let's continue in the comments. Continued. The suit man soft and drug me and says something. I don't remember what, just a few words of relatively normal small talk. I think I want to say he asks, what are you doing in the city? But that could just be my imagination filling in what I've forgotten. While he spoke, I watched the suit man reach into the breast pocket of his suit and retrieve a comedically short cigar stub. There was barely any cigar left to smoke, and he hadn't cut the ash from the tip. Somehow, this last detail didn't seem to produce any mess whatsoever. The suit man took my ladder and lit a cigar stub effortlessly, like it was only a cigarette. Not once had he glanced at my little sister, by the way, who was sitting directly beside me. That registered as odd to me by this point. Really odd. After inhaling, he looked over at the lighter for a moment and then announced, I like your lighter. His eyes don't seem pleased, though. I can tell he was as well as impressed at, by Keith Haring's artwork as I am. How much do you want for it? Sid man asked. I'd probably give him more devilly voice, but... <laughs> It's just too much effort right now. It's just a lighter, mate. I told him, shrugging, like I alluded to above. I don't like Keith Haring all that much, and I don't mind the idea of parting with it. We had lighters in the hotel room anyway. We just forgotten to bring them with us. No big deal. Take it, I offered. The suit man ignored me and reached into his pocket to retrieve his wallet. Now he's counting. Now he's counting hundreds out out loud. His fingers flicking like through the bill, was in a spider way that's unsettling to watch. One hundred, two hundred, three, four. What the hell is going on? I forget what I said. Something bewildering, passive, non confrontational. Like it's okay. I just wanted the suit man to walk away with the lighter. 
I regret ever inviting him to approach us. There was something about standing so close to him that felt like standing on the edge of a dizzying height. Once he cast on as as one thousand and dollars, my little sister blurted something out. I think it was you're crazy. I'm almost certain that's what she said. My little sister didn't sound amused or entertained by the situation. She sounded more shocked and weirded out. It was a voice he used with a creep at the bar. The seated man said bloody daggers at her. It was terrifying. His eyes lit up with pure malice and his lips peeled back for a moment in his awful, awful snarl. We're talking, he growled at her. Just those two words and I felt so loaded. The men are talking, it said. Then the seated man looked with reproach, like it was like I was at fault for not having her under control, for letting the girl interrupt our important business. It's just a lighter, I repeated, so it's more like a person being mugged and someone offered being offered money. All I wanted it was to get some distance between us. You can have it. I don't need it. That was not. This was not the answer that he wanted. He'd already counted the grand that he had in his wallet. Now he's pulling more loose cash out from his pockets in a weird frenzy. At this point, he's insisting that I give him a price for it. Any price. He honestly seems kind of worried now. Scared, maybe. He's like panicking. It's like he's trying to buy something he wants dearly and he sees the opportunity he passing him by. I've had a lot of friends ask me why I didn't take the student man's money. Some almost seemed pissed at me for not taking it, if they believed me at all. The obvious answer is that I'm already decently lucky in life and I didn't need it. It's not what, but that's not what I actually think happened though. It's just hard to explain this to people and not have them focus on the money. It felt like the sued man was actually correct somehow uh, and that I had been wrong. It wasn't just lighter. It suddenly felt inexplicably valuable. Not lighter itself, which was already in his pocket, but the transaction taking place. I was mugged at knife point in an Australian big city when I was a young man. I was scared then. Very scared. But this was a different type of fear. I've only felt this kind of terror once in my life. There was no adrenaline and like the fire flight and he had been muffled somehow. It was like being soul sucked by a dementor. As silly as that sounds. Every second spent even discussing this, this transaction was spiritually trading to the point of actual physical exhaustion. I told the suited man, no, one last time. Then my little sister and I began promptly walking in the other direction. I, pretty soon we were running and brought that a light, running down the street like someone was chasing us. We made it to the hotel, and then we rode the elevator in total silence, both still shaken by our encounter. Once we got into our room, we started smoking in the bathroom like degenerates, and suddenly this profound wave of relief came over us. We were giddy like you get when and you have a near-death experience. Finally, one of us asked as if that was the devil, and the other answered instantly because we'd both been thinking it. It's a story that feels both silly and underwhelming to tell, but still makes me uneasy to think about it. I think the devil was trying to buy her soul from me. I'd love to hear your thoughts about this encounter. I try my best to convey a sense of inexplicable danger that we both felt, but it is a hard thing to describe without sounding overly dramatic. 
I was recently talking with some writers about a project that I'm working on, and no one asked, no one asked if I'd ever had a strange encounter like this one. I haven't revisited these memories ever since. I may flesh out my thoughts on this encounter and publish it to my media and sometime soon. If you'd like more creepiness out of me, the link above will take you to someone else's account, account of meeting the devil. Here's a quick summary. It's this book I found a, a few weeks ago written by a World War I doctor and a Freemason. Okay, named Von Bateson. Or Bateson. Bateson sounds probably more likely. I couldn't find any E, e copies available online, just hadn't felt kept in private libraries, so I decided to publish it for free. The book starts as an introduction to Freemason philosophy, which is fairly beautifully written. Then becomes a harrowing wartime memoir, with some legitimately disturbing depictions of bodily horrors, and finally it ends as an allegorical, maybe not so allegorical, account of conversing with the devil after he appears to Mr. Bateson on the battlefield. It's a fascinating read. If that interests you, check it out. I hope I will hopefully be publishing more lost occult books, tablets, ephemera, all that. Stay tuned to my medium or my social or my Instagram um, stories for updates. I'm not going to be checking that out because one, I don't have time to read books, and two, I'm not doing that on video because as I'm not trying to get sued. Vet trust and with tr that. Jeez, this has already been a long start, a long day. We still have three more. Anyway, did I experience a sleep paralysis or something else? I just like to cut the BS and go straight to my story since I don't even know how to express this as clear. Come on. That was unnecessary. <sighs> Even the Wi-Fi is saying it's been too long a day a a, a video. Just give me a minute. My goodness. I sure do love when the internet just breaks on me, don't you? Okay, now we can try this again. Beautiful. Now let's get right back into this. Did I experience a sleep paralysis or something else? 
I just like to cut the BS and go straight to my story since I don't even know how to express this as clearly as I'd like to. I just woke up and I'm not a fluent English speaker, so sorry if my English seems a bit funky. Believe me, we've already read a few stories where the English seems far more funky than this. It's people who don't speak English as a first language who usually get a lot more correct than others. Anyway, so last night I woke up around 4 a.m. because I had a serious urge to pee. Relatable. Not the time, because that's actually when I have to wake up anyway. Before I take any action, my eye catch a some kind of human and shaped creature sitting on a on a chair next to my bed. I remember it's a rather slim and longish figure. Limbs were somewhat prominent and it either had no head or didn't have a face, can't remember properly. But there was really nothing truly notable about its appearance. Actually it kind of reminded me of one of my friends. Like it seemed kind of normal despite having no well, face or head and appearing from nowhere to my bedroom in the middle of the night. When I saw it, I was a bit confused but not afraid. I was totally able to move my body through the whole experience since I remember changing my posture to sitting on the edge of my bed when I actually realized that I wasn't alone in my home. I live alone. And I felt like the situation needed some attention. Like I said, I wasn't afraid at any point. I kind of remember thinking like, I maybe should be, but aside the fear wouldn't bring anything to, more to my situation. So I just sat there and stared at this mysterious shadow person. It didn't pay any attention to me actually, just sat there minding their own business I guess. First I was thinking that, that I maybe should ask them to leave since they didn't have a permission to hang out in my bedroom, but I decided not to make any contact with it. I don't know why, since I'm still dying out of curiosity, but I think eventually it went just like supposed. So after like two long is minutes, I finally remember my bladder and realized I truly needed to pee. I turned my back to the creature so I could turn on the light at my bedside table. And when I was sudden got up from bed, the shadow dude was just gone? No vague emotions, no fear, not any typical sleep paralysis symptoms like anxiety, pressure, or being unable to move my body. The situation felt somewhat eerie, but I quite naturally accepted the presence of whatever it was. I went to the bathroom then and back to bed and fell asleep again. This being was the first thing I remembered in the morning, and despite I'm thinking that it's the whole time I've been awake, I haven't succeeded at, to come up with any logical explanation. <sighs> also, I'd like to add that I'm not on any medication, I've never been diagnosed with any psychological conditions, or engaged in psychotic behavior. I was totally sober when I went to sleep, and I've had no prominent stress in my life that lately that could ex possibly explain this experience. I mean, sometimes when you're just waking up, you see things that aren't really there. I mean, I remember as a kid, uh, if I were waking up and I saw a slightly a folded like blanket or a coat, I would think it was some sort of creature. I mean, heck, when I was really young, I thought I was talking to a lion made out of laundry. That might have been a dream. Seems like you have an empty in the room with you know, that don't give any attention and I don't give in to fear, it feeds on your fears. Hmm. Wait, anyway, um Just two more, and then we will be whew, done for today. When I had 27, if I was about 20, I was in the living room watching TV. It was sometime around 1 a.m. to 3 a.m. The way the house is set up, the living room is across from the kitchen and with an archway connecting them and the couch facing the archway slash kitchen. 
I see from my peripheral the draw or closest to me open with force. I freeze up because it scared the heck out of me. And just stare at the drawer. I think like 50 seconds pass and then it slams shut and I bolt from my bedroom. If it wasn't paranormal, what could have been the cause? For more context as to why I lean towards paranormal is because the previous owner of this house, the dad, went missing a few months after we moved in. I think a couple years is or a year later, police found his remains. I don't know if it was him specifically that opened the drawer. Remember the house of spiritual energy jet or because of what happened to him? Wow. Whew. Hmm. And now for the last story. I think I was momentarily possessed. Since I was a kid, I knew my parents' basement had some paranormal presence. My family never noticed or believed me, but a couple of people came over and mentioned it without me having ever said anything. When I was a kid, I'm all sorry now, I was sleeping down there with my friend, and the bed started it shaking, and we saw a very tall blue figure with yellow eyes curling weights on the bench press. It was laughing, and the feeling I got was that it was enjoying us being scared. If we ran upstairs, I've never er, er, seen the figure again. But I could always kind of feel the presence going down there. Years later, I remember being in the living room upstairs and hearing loud typing coming from um, downtown and the sound of hooves on the floor. It continued a few minutes on and off, then stopped. It was rare to have something like that happen, but on occasion I did hear some sounds coming from the basement. What? A night as an adult and years after I moved out, I was visiting my parents with an ex-boyfriend. He was one of the people who told me he felt a bad prize in the basement, but we spent the night down there anyways, since that's where the guest room was, even though I told him about the weird things that happened before. There were photos of ancestors of my stepdad. All the people in the photos were dead at this point. He said the photos creeped him out. There wasn't anything particularly odd about the photos to me. They were just old black and white portraits and family photos. As we were getting ready to sleep, weird things started happening. This could sound weird, but it sounded like someone was peeing in the toilet very, really loudly. There was a hallway at the bottom of the stairs with a laundry room and bathroom attached, so we couldn't see it. Then we heard the sound of water flowing, but then it didn't sound like water flowing through pipes. It sounded like water being poured onto the floor, and it wasn't stopping. I was scared my boyfriend knew it, but he tried to reassure me that it wasn't weird and the sound worsened. The feeling I got was it was listening to us and made it worse just so that my boyfriend could tell me it wasn't weird. The computer monitor randomly it turned on and we just tried to ignore it all. Eventually it all stopped and we went to sleep. At some point in the early morning, my boyfriend tried to wake me up and apparently I have no memory of this, but he told me after I sat up and said, Dead souls printed, and laid back down. Then he actually woke me up later and I had no memory of it. He mentioned me creeped out by the old photos in the basement and then I remember he said Dead Souls Print entered, which I guess alluded to that. This whole situation happened about five years ago and still really creeps me out. My family doesn't seem to notice anything weird about the basement and is comfortable there, but I'm not. I don't know if there's anything I should be doing or if I should just forget it since I don't live there. Whew. <sighs> Oh. 
Well, that was the last story. If you liked this video, please leave a like on the video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. Looks like the rain stopped, and it's actually a pretty nice day out again. For being cloudy and having just had rain. I have no idea what I'm going to be doing tomorrow, but until then, goodbye!